So it's good to be back with you all. Uh, I don't, last time I saw you, I was, I just announced that I was running for sheriff against uh, Hodgson. And what I forgot to mention though, was that it was actually here. I think I forgot to mention this. It was actually here in Mansfield that uh, I met someone named Marlene Pollock. Marlene Pollock is uh, with Coalition for Social Justice and Bristol County for Correctional Justice. And Marlene's pretty much the person who recruited me. But I met her back in 2018, I think it was, maybe it was 2019, at the Black Doll Museum when that was here in Mansfield. And so, uh, yeah, the, the origins of me running for sheriff kind of started here in Mansfield. So um, I won the primary. And it was, uh, you know, I had two other Democrats, either one of them I would have supported against Hodgson. You know, they're both would be better than him. Um, I actually, uh, you know, have uh, recently done a poll and it was about a week or two ago. We are in pretty much a dead heat. The thing that I have going for me is that I've got a solid message, a really good reason of running. Um, I've got, you know, solid credentials. I used to work in jail. I worked in prison. I'm the um, you know, mayor of Attleboro. I, uh, you know, I have master's in criminology. So I've got a good background because the, the job of the county sheriff in Massachusetts is to run the uh, county jail. It's not about law enforcement. Hodgson wants to make it about law enforcement because he is failing at running a jail. And so he wants people to focus on the um you know, the, the law enforcement end of things. That's sort of a leftover from the days of when Massachusetts had unincorporated areas of the state. But now every area of Massachusetts is incorporated and we have local, state, and federal law enforcement to deal with uh, law enforcement issues. Hodgson likes to make the race about immigration. There's a fact, the, the sheriff in Massachusetts in most places has no statutory authority to do anything about immigration. You know, but it's an emotional issue. It's an issue that really gets people worked up about. So he capitalizes on that and says that I'm going to keep you safe by really keeping these folks out of Massachusetts. I'm going to keep them out of the United States. All he can do is run his mouth. He has no authority to actually address immigration issues. And when he did have some authority on immigration because of a 287G contract with ICE, because of his mismanagement and abuse of inmates, he lost that. He says it was political. I respond by saying a lot of other... Republican sheriffs throughout the country did not lose their contract, but he did. So from A to Z, he's a disaster. Uh, you know, it's, and it's it's a winnable race, but I cannot do it alone. I need help. Uh, we're in a real tie right now, statistical tie. And um, I started this race with thirty dollars in a website. Hodgson started with two hundred eighty thousand dollars. He's blowing through money a lot faster than I am, and that is something I like. Um, but the downside is that he has money to uh, move his message in a way that I don't. And so I have to outsmart him and outwork him because I just don't have – right now he has over $200,000 more than I do. And so there's a lot of areas in Bristol County that I um, – my name is not known. So if you can help anyway – Small donations add up. Big ones give me a boost. Um, if you want to participate in the campaign, uh, knocking on doors, holding signs at some intersections, um, you know, uh, phone banking, if you'd like to do that, uh, donating. Uh, I sometimes make the joke, you know, the best nation in the world? Donation. So, <laughs> a little joke. Um, but the, uh, yeah, there's, but also I have a couple other things here. I have, um, Actually, I remember giving you guys palm cards in the past, but I have uh, you know, remittance envelopes if you want to send something in by a check, or you can go to my website, palm cards, um, bumper stickers, and, um, you know, so if you guys want to take those, I would recommend putting them on your window, not necessarily on the paint of your car, but also uh, yard signs. If you can put up a yard sign, I have um, the small ones, the 18 by 24 size but then just yesterday i finally got some big ones the two feet by four foot signs so if uh you have a location that you'd like one it just helps me get my name recognition up so um yeah happy to take any questions from you guys um i will mention though, if you want to sign up to volunteer go to my website paulhero.org that's the best place to do it we have a really organized campaign it's just we, a lot of people don't care about the race for sheriff um Mara Healy raised two and a half million dollars in the first six months of the year. Mara Healy, by the way, endorsed me, but 
she raised two and a half million dollars in the first six months. I think I raised in the first six months maybe about sixty seven, sixty thousand dollars maybe, you know, sixty or seventy thousand. A lot of people just don't. A lot of people don't know what the sheriff does. They don't know, you know, and so they oftentimes it's the end of the road in criminal justice. You go to jail for misdemeanor, out of sight, out of mind. You know, they don't think about it. And uh, but yeah, I need your help. So um, anything you can do, just let me know. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, or you can take a remittance envelope, send in a check. Yeah, whatever. I'm on Act Blue and PayPal. I need to put my Venmo up there. I just haven't done that yet. So I run a really frugal campaign. I do my own website and I do my own graphic design. I don't pay people to do that. I do it myself. So that way I can spend that money that would have gone to that on moving my message. So I, um, if, if it's not increasing my name recognition or moving it, that, you know, moving my message, that's, I don't spend money on it. So that's what my campaign contributions go to. So, um, yes, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I, writing a letter to the editor. So the poll that we did showed a couple of things. One of them is that my favorability, unfavorability is two to one, which is good because a lot of people, do, I, I increased my name recognition by 20%, uh, 20 points between when I did the poll, the first one back in December, and then when we did it last week. So, and the good thing is that when for every three people I meet, two like me, one don't, and or one doesn't, excuse me. Um, with Hodgson, his favorable, unfavorable is one-to-one. -one. So for every two people he meets, one likes and one doesn't. So he's basically maxed out, and he's pretty much has the support he has. And so what I think he's going to be doing is he's really going to be going after, you know, probably going negative, really targeting to make sure other people don't like me. Um, but... Yeah, the uh, what was your original question? I kind of went off on a tangent. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that that was the point. So I was mentioning that. So we need to keep hammering Hodgson on the fact that he wore a Confederate flag tie. His tr ties to Trump. Trump polled very poorly in Bristol County, even though he did better here in Bristol County than he did anywhere else in the state. Trump is still very unpopular in Bristol County. Um, so letters to the editor hammering him, but also writing letters, not just necessarily the Sun Chronicle, but getting outside of the Sun Chronicle, writing for the Fall River papers, Easton paper, Taunton, writing letters to the editor saying, hey, we're part of Bristol County. So, but getting my name recognition up too, letting people know, hey, Paul worked in jail. He worked in prison. He's got a master's in criminology. Um, you know, he's a mayor of Attleboro. My budget in Attleboro is $165 million. Hodgson's budget is about $60 million. I manage a much bigger budget than he does. Um, I've got 500 employees. He has just over 500 employees. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm qualified and people need to know that there's a viable alternative. But not just that, in your letters to the editor, mention the patronage positions that he hires people just to do pension padding at the end and, you know, just kind of bypasses people who have come up through the system. You know, that goes on. The, the costly lawsuits that I mentioned that he wore a Confederate flag tie, you know, that's out there. Just check WBUR. Um, you know, he says the Confederate flag tie was just a, uh, uh, it was patriotic colors. If you're a racist, they're patriotic, you know, so, <laughs> right. um, right. you know, but it, it really, it was part of a series of ties. Um, you know, and he, he says he just he dismisses, he doesn't even apologize for it. So, but yeah, the letters to the editor talking about my strengths and his weaknesses it, and, and the economy is really big right now. So mentioning to people that he is, um, you know, costing people taxpayer dollars, very important. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, two, two little factoids you can also include. The cost of programming per inmate is lower in Bristol County than anywhere else in the state. It's lower here than anywhere else. It's like a thousand dollars a year per person or something like that. And in other places it's, you know, five, six, seven thousand dollars. It was just a lot more. I actually have a graph I can, if anybody emails me or sends me a message through my website, I can send that to you. Um, and the report it comes from, and it was put out by 
I forgot what organization, um, but it, uh, it's, it's, it'll, I'll send you that. But the other factoid is the rate of recidivism, which is reoffending, is the highest in Bristol County, um, is highest in Bristol County than anywhere else in the state. So he's offering fewer treatment programs because he's spending less money on treatment, and that's shown with the high rate of recidivism. And that's why he, one of the reasons he focuses on immigration so much, one, he's you know, basically a racist, but the other issue is that he, um, he's failing as a sheriff to actually keep us safe on people reoffending. And the, the evidence of that is the low spending on programming and the high rate of recidivism, higher here than anywhere else in the state. So he's just not running a good jail. And yes, ma'am. I don't kick him around on my website because I, um, I, I probably should, um, you know, talk about, I, I, I will add something about that. Yeah, and that, that's the, I will do that. And I will not only just give you the talking points, I'll give you the uh, government resource, like the Massachusetts Department of Correction, the link that shows that we have the highest rate of recidivism. There is actually, I, I have to qualify that, there's one place, one county that has a slightly higher rate than us, but it was measured with like 15 people. And when you have a sample size that small, you can't really draw any conclusions from that. And so th that doesn't actually, it was like literally it was like 15 people, 13 people, it was really tiny. Whereas ours had a sample size of several hundred. Um, in the Mass Department of Correction Research Division, which I used to be the director of, I was director of research and planning for the Mass Department of Correction. Um, they're the ones that produced that report. But with the, um, the WBUR story, and there's actually a couple others, that talk about the Confederate flag, I'll include that. You can see it. Then there's also the um, the the low cost of uh, programming that you mentioned. So we spend a tiny. I'll, I'll send you the report link. So I'm not just making these things up, but he likes to dangle a shiny, emotional, anger provoking um, issue over here on the side, which is immigration. And I'm doing. He's not doing anything on immigration other than running his mouth. So, um, but yeah. So anyway, what other what other thing questions you guys have? Anything? Yeah, Kevin, of course. You know what I could do is my um, my yard sign looks very much like my bumper sticker, except the name Paul is above, you know, here over here, it's a different configuration. But what I can do is I can print up, have Connolly Printing, what I do in my work with, I can have them print up a thousand or maybe more uh, four by six postcards and it would just have my yard sign on the front of it and then just give them to you and you guys can, oh, free is for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. What I can, you want me to send you a copy of my uh, yard sign? Because, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, I'll just send you my, um. Oh, that would be great, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I did really well in the North in the primary because i've been in the newspaper for the last 10 years as state rep for five years and state rep for i'm sorry mayor for five years and so i did really well in the north part of the county and and you know including rehoboth and norton and um and i did very well in the south i knocked on eleven thousand doors um i personally did that you know to, to win the primary and um you know so the places i didn't do well were kind of in the center where uh nick bernier and todd i'm sorry todd mcgee was my last opponent uh george um mcneil were better known, Fall River and, uh, you know, Somerset, Swansea, that's where they're from. So I didn't do so well there. Taunton it was a lot closer in Taunton, but it was, uh, it's still Nick went, he, he got there earlier than I did, spent more time there than I did. So he won that. But, um, but yeah, that's, I'll happily do that. That's a great idea. Yeah. If you, yeah. If, Yeah. The, cool. All right. Great. That's great. That'd be great. Yeah. Because I, the way I, yeah, the election is, I think six weeks away, but we have three weeks, maybe four weeks to win this because in the next week, mail-in voting is going to start. And so people have already made up their mind basically starting next week. And, and then early voting starts, I think around October 20th or so. So, more than half of voters are going to have already 
voted before November 8th. And so if I'm going to win this, and it is winnable, it's going to be tough, but if I'm going to win this, we have to do it in the next three weeks, basically. Because the last three weeks, people have already made up their mind, and most people have already voted at, well, more than half have already voted at that point. So, um, yeah, if anybody wants... I do have yard signs in my car, so after... Um, if, you know, what I just, if you take the yard sign, what I'd like is for you to just um, give me your name and your address so I can one send you or whoever you put it up a thank you, but also um, to collect it at the end of the season after November 8th, because we, I don't just leave them on people's yards. I always collect my yard signs, but I do have probably about 10 or so in my car right now. Um, and I, you know, I'll pass these around. These are bumper stickers. If you want one, take one. If you don't, that's okay. I actually don't have one on my car. Um, the reason I don't is because the way I drive, I don't want my driving to be associated with my name or my, <laughs> oh God, <laughs> that's a true story. When I was a state representative, I didn't get a state house license plate because I didn't want to like, oh my God, look at the way that guy drives. Cause I'm always late for stuff. And you know, so uh, yeah, true story. And these are um, little remittance envelopes. If you don't want to donate online, you can, um, you know, send in a check and uh, these are uh, palm cards. And it's got a little bit of information on me as well. So if you can just, you know, circulate those, pass them around and, uh, you know, whatever you don't, uh, whatever you don't uh, you take right now, I'll take back. And so, um, yeah. So anyway, other questions? Yeah, Joe. I'm joining the coordinated campaign. And so I am going, you know, I just spoke with uh, Mara Healy's campaign yesterday, yesterday, the day before, maybe both. Um, so now that the primary is over, we're getting organized and um, with them. So, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier um, to a couple of folks, and I'm not worried about this number. I did the poll last week and the week before, and Mara Healy has a 41% approval in Bristol County, but a 49% disapproval. But here's two reasons why I'm not worried about that. Number one, she has a lot of money to increase her favorability and get her message out there. That's number one. Number two, Jeff Deal was way worse than her. His unfavorables were so high, he's just not electable. I mean, he's, he's just a disaster. Yeah, it was at least, you know, Bristol County is not going to go for Jeff Deal. And if Bristol County doesn't go for him, there's no county that's going to go for him. His, Trump got more votes in Bristol County than anywhere else in the state. But Trump still lost. He got 45-ish percent. But, uh, but yeah, Jeff Deal is just really not electable. So, so Mara is, you know, she has a little bit of work to do here in Bristol County. But she, I believe she'll win it by the end of the day. She just has, you know, just got to get her name out and get her, get why she's running out there a little more. So. Um, what other questions you guys have? So is that so? Yeah, we are. We're going to be joining that. It can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, th this, I, I can win this race. I can't do it alone, though. I need you guys to put yard signs up, donate, your small donations add up. Um, you know, big ones give me the boost. Uh, putting bumper stickers on your car, it all, it, every little bit helps. Um, you know, door knocking. I tonight I have a cookout at my house. You know, it, at six o'clock to nine o'clock, all of you are invited. It's in Attleboro. It's actually the address is on the back of the palm card at the bottom. That's my home address, four forty four Newport Ave. It's a tiny, tiny print at the back on the bottom. Um, but yeah, you're welcome to attend if you'd like. Six o'clock to nine o'clock. Senator Feeney is going to be there. Adam Scanlon is going to be there. A state rep from a um, little bit of Mansfield. So, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's going to be tough. I mean, it's. You know, I, when I got into this race, I was told that this is going to be a national race and I'm going to get a million dollars from all over the country. I've gotten five thousand dollars from all over the country. That's what I've gotten. And not a million. And it's not a national race. It's, um, you know, it, it's, you know, a lot of people just aren't paying attention because a lot of people just don't care about sheriff. They really don't. So 
the one last accolade about Hodgson. The ACLU has rated him as the worst sheriff in the country. Wow. Um, yeah. So I, 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 that one I don't have a source for. I've just heard that. Um, if he's not the worst, he's probably up there. So, and what other questions you guys have? Any? So, do you want my? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I've almost always been outspent by my opponents. My when I beat Kevin Dumas. Um, for mayor back in 2017, he had over fifty thousand dollars. I had fifteen, so he had three times more than three times as much money as me. I knocked on uh, ten thousand doors. He didn't do any, so I outworked him. It was also time for change. When I beat George Ross, another Republican, back in 2012, um, he had a lot more money than me, two to one, as much money as I had. Um, I outworked him too. Burt Buckley, another Republican, when I beat him in 2014, um, the mass fiscal alliance they pumped in a whole bunch of money to that race i still outworked them and still won that so I, i've been able to beat people on the money front uh, even you know in the past but that's because i personally could knock on doors in my last race in november of 2021 i knocked on over ten thousand doors i didn't have anybody doing doors for me anybody doing phone calls for me i personally just outworked my opponent and um so but this race we have 560,000 people in Bristol County. I knocked on 11,000 doors. I can't get to all of them. In fact, after the uh, election's over, I'm probably going to need surgery on my foot because I kind of overdid it. Um, but it's, yeah, it, money matters an immense, especially in a race like this, because there are pockets of Bristol County that I just don't have the volunteers to get to, even though we have a good volunteer operation, we just can't get to 560,000 people, 285,000 voters. Um, so yeah, money matters, especially in a race like this, you know, where, you know, we, we need that money to move my message, get my name recognition up, let people know what Hodgson is doing or not doing. So it, it matters. Um, yeah. Sure. Mm hmm When, when I ran for mayor, I said I was going to do two, maybe three terms because they're two-year terms. I'm in my third and final term right now as mayor. I got elected with 54%, re-elected with 67 re-elected with 66 So I've done okay in Attleboro. But I don't want to be mayor for life. I came in after Kevin Dumas was there for 14 years, second longest serving mayor. So I wanted to assure the voters of Attleboro that I was not going to be mayor for life because Judy Robbins, before Kevin Dumas, was there for 12 years. So the, the two of them served 26 years and two mayors. Hodgson has been in office for 25 years, and I want to reassure the voters of Bristol County that I'm not going to be sure, another sheriff for life. I'll do one, maybe two terms. One term is six years. If I can, accomplish, if I can change the system in six years and I want to go for another term, then I think I deserve the other term, you know, but the voters will decide that. But then, um, you know, but, so I'll do one, maybe two terms, and then I'll move on because I won't be sheriff for life. I'll give somebody else a chance. The, um, but yeah, ha, one of the things that I've, I've really picked up on is people think it's time for change. He's just been there. And that resonates with conservative voters as well. They don't like that sheriff for life, the politician for life, the, you know, to qualify that. Actually, I don't really mind legislators in office for 20, 30, 40 years. If you're um, a state senator, U.S. senator, U.S. rep, that's actually – that's not a bad thing necessarily because then you bring institutional knowledge and if you have term limits, then you destroy the institutional knowledge of an executive, I'm sorry, a legislative branch, but with the executive branch, mayor, governor, president, sheriff, you know, I think that being in those executive capacities for that long is probably bad for the institution uh, because then that institution sort of takes on the personality of that executive, which is an unhealthy thing. So for legislative branch, I think term limits destroy the institutional knowledge. For executive branches, I think it's good on keeping that check in power. So that's just my opinion, though. Anything else? No. All right. So 
I'm going to head over to Attleboro High School. We have our grand opening today for the opening to the public of our new $250 million high school. And that started at uh, 10 o'clock. So I'm going to head over there to just greet people as they come in. And um, yeah, so if anybody wants a yard sign, rather than, I, I can give them to you right now if you want to come out, but then you're missing some of your meeting. What we could do is if you wanted to do that, I could do that. Otherwise, you can go on my website, go to the volunteer page because yard sign is a form of volunteering. Sign up for a yard sign there. If you want a if you have a big busy road and you want one of my two by fours, I only have a handful of those. But if you want one on like if it's a road like this, you know, go into the send me a um, comment about that, like that you want a big two by four. So uh, yeah, anything you can do to help, it, it all adds up. It really does. So. Cool. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Well, thank you all. So um, if you have any questions, you got my email address on the card. Um, just let me know. But I'm gonna head over to. Out of our high school now, and uh, thank you for your time and your support. I do appreciate it. And thank you. Thanks.